Welcome to episode four of Drop In. Each week we uh, dive into a topic about our drinking water and talk about ways that we can use water wisely. This week we're talking about salmon. Uh, there are species um, that are really important to our ecosystems in this region and they have habitats that overlap with our water system. And uh, so today we're going to talk about how we manage um, our water for both people. My name is Melissa Levo. I'm a water conservation program manager with the Saving Water Partnership. Um, we're a group of 18 uh, utilities that offer tips, tools, and rebates to help our customers save water. And I'm going to be joined by, in a moment by uh, my co-host Jordan. Jordan works at the Cedar River Watershed Education Center and often talks about salmon to people who visit. Um, so, you know, salmon come up a lot this time of year um, because this is a time of year when we're, we're, uh, stream flows are naturally lower because we're coming off of the summer months and into the fall. And the salmon, of course, are uh, needing to use that, those streams. Uh, they're coming back from the oceans and swimming upstream up into our watershed um, and uh, uh, needing to, um, to spawn. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll see if Jordan's able to join us. Again, Jordan, uh, you know, she often will give tours to people who are coming up to visit the watershed, which is, of course, where the salmon are trying to make it. There's Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I was stuck in the uh, cyberspace there, so nice to see you. Live shows, man. <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, too. So I thank you for introducing me. I did. I was watching you. I did get to hear that. So, yeah. Um, it's nice to have a moment to share with whoever is watching about what we do up at the Cedar River Watershed, the municipal watershed, and how the uh, water, our drinking water, which we also use for our toilets and showers, is also managed for fish. Um, it's part of the habitat conservation plan. There's even endangered species that depend on the same water that we that we use for drinking. And um, so I don't know how much you got to share with people about uh, salmon. Not that this is the time of year that they're uh, working their way up from the oceans, up the streams and rivers, up into our watersheds. But yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, they don't quite all the way make it up. We don't let them come all the way up to uh, where our drinking water um, would be impacted by their presence and the taste. However, we do need to manage and do manage the water inflow into streams so that um, our, our salmon can live. So backing it up, what happens this time of year? Autumn is, is amazing in the Pacific Northwest as salmon are swimming back to the stream where they were born. Mm -hmm. um, and for us here, we have an opportunity to go down to the Cedar River and actually see it happen. You don't have to be part of a formal uh, tour, but what you're going to see happening is our salmon swimming upstream to lay their eggs. Okay. To be to, to be part of the life cycle. I think you have a picture of the egg. I have some props here. So unless you have really special glasses, thank you. And let, that's a, an incredible picture of the red there. And unless you have really special glasses, polarized glasses do work to look in the water, you wouldn't be able to see that up close. But know what's happening. So when you see the salmon in the Cedar River swimming up stream, you'll see uh, the, the salmon stop and move their tail back and forth so that they have a place to lay the eggs, the female laying the eggs and the male salmon to come and fertilize those eggs. Yeah. But none of that would, would be successful if the amount of water coming in to the river scoured the the river. So there can't be too much water or it will cover the eggs or wash them out. And so part of when we say we're managing the water for people and fish, it's managing the flow of water 
for both how we can continue to consume it and how the fish are depending on it. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, I think in, in this picture, it's kind of deceiving because it's super zoomed in. But these are, these are you know, fragile eggs. Um, I learned recently, they're called reds, spelled with two Ds, R-E-D-D. -D. That's what it's called I was, when, I was, when I was looking it up. Um, so, yeah, it's something that, that the flow of water can actually impact the, the success of those eggs surviving to, to hatch. Yes. And another part that you, you wouldn't necessarily think about, uh, especially because we're doing our job, dirt does not come out of your faucet. <laughs> so part of managing, which is a really great, great, yeah, yeah, we, we depend on clear drinking water. And so one thing we often share with po folks is the forest to faucet connection. And what that really means, I can show you here, hopefully, uh, without dropping my computer, an important part. But there's an important part in the forest where the streams and rivers run, cedar included. Um, where the work, what we call the riparian area. Actually, the picture behind your head is a wonderful example uh, <laughs> of what a riparian, a healthy riparian area could look like. We, uh, you know, the the uh, forested area, the roots of the trees hold the soil. So again, the land is managed for the health of the water, for the healthy forested land. And I'll give you an example. Let me. We, we asked the kids, I'll let you decide, Melissa. Mm. <laughs> do, you want this, do you want this water or this water to drink? Which would you prefer? Uh, I want the one that looks clear. You sure? I, I don't know. Positive. Most I middle schoolers pick this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yes. And... You know, one of the things in managing the water is is making sure that sediment is removed before it's filtered. It's filtered before it comes to you. But the land is filtering it even before we use um, human mechanisms to filter the water. So managing the forest, the riparian areas help keep our drinking water clear. I invite you to go on a virtual tour because... I hope you're all taking care of yourself. But, and right now we're, we're not able to, you know, uh, as part of our public health, we're not going up into the watershed, but you can go on a virtual tour and see the source of your drinking water, which looks much more like this, beautiful, clear water, and we continue to take care of it. So there's a connection between the land, the health of the water, and the health of the fish. We also don't want, we don't want this much sediment to go downstream because it could cover and smother those eggs. So it's all quite important. Yeah, that, that makes sense that, that yeah, again, the, these, these eggs, I mean, my prop again, are, you know, they're fragile and they, they depend on, on um, the right amount of stream flow and that water being clear um, so that they're not being damaged by all that sediment. And that which our forests are helping to, to filter for us way up. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and the other thing from, you know, the, from the conservation point of view, the reason why, I think I said this at the beginning, that this comes up this time of year is that this is when our stream flows are naturally lower because we're coming off of the summer months and we haven't had a lot of rain. Um, and so we are carefully managing those stream flows for the health of, of those salmon eggs. Um, so um, the other thing that I, I want to make sure everyone knew about is, you know, the Seattle, Seattle Aquarium has information about the salmon journey and they're hosting a webinar you can um, go to their website for more information about that um, as always you can go to savingwater.org for tips about how uh, you can use water wisely every day um, I mean, especially in in this time of year but every day um, and then i think there's where where can they go for more information from the watershed well you can always visit, visit us on facebook at the cedar river watershed education center and um and if you, I encourage you to enjoy one of those webinars. You'll meet Katie, who is another one of the public education specialists at the watershed doing the webinar and learn about the relationship that, again, protecting the water has to people and to fish. And um, yeah, you know, it's it's a wonderful connection. I, I, I don't know. I think I, I told you a little bit of the story and 
I know we'll close out, but we're not encouraging people to go in groups for all the reasons we already know, but you can still go down to the Cedar River and the um, informational farm will tell you where to go. It is spectacular. I, it, it brings me so much joy. You can walk down to the Cedar River in Renton. You're standing on these cobbled stones, co the cobbled brick, and you look in and you see the salmon swimming for life. Another like, it, yeah, it's those, yeah, those are the sockeye. It's just incredible. Just right there in the middle of the city with like crows chasing eagles and salmon. And you're like, going to, you know, near the library there. It's just, it's amazing. So I encourage you to do it and, and celebrate life. All of it. Great. Yeah. Visit, visit the salmon safely. It is, I can attest to, it is an incredible experience to watch them making their journey up those streams. So right. yeah. And thanks so much for bringing all your information about salmon today, Jordan. And until next <laughs> time, thanks for all right. Cheers. Okay. <laughs>